This is a case study of Ms. A, one of the informal cross-border traders that we spoke to as part of our research for the USAID Southern Africa Trade Hub project, looking at gender and informal cross-border trade in Southern Africa. Ms. A is a single mother with a household of seven, three children aged four, 10, and 12, and she's also responsible for providing for three siblings. Ms. A says she learned everything she knows about informal cross-border trade from her mother, who is now deceased. Ms. A lives in Kasani, Botswana, and she trades the Kazangula Ferry Border Post to Zambia, the Nagoma Land Border Post to Namibia, and the Martins Draft Border Post to South Africa. Ms. A also operates a temporary market stall in Kasani Market in Botswana. She generally works seven days a week from very early in the morning to sundown. And her schedule is actually quite seasonal as she's training in different goods and structures her days differently during the summer and the winter. During the summer, she wakes up at 4.30 in the morning and prepares food for her children. And then she gets in line for the Zambia border crossing before it opens at 6 a.m. She crosses the border to barter for vegetables from Zambian farmers who live about 10 kilometers from the border. She carries groceries that she then exchanges for sweet potatoes, broccoli, ground nuts, and sugar beans. She is usually back in Botswana at her market stall in Kasani by about noon, where then she spends the rest of the day selling the goods she's just traded for. Now during the winter, she goes to Lusaka, Zambia about three times a month and spends about five to six days on each trip. And she carries groceries to and across the border and then barters it for secondhand clothes. She says that in general, the clothing business is more lucrative during the winter, and that's why she engages in clothing trade only during the winter months. In general, with the high turnover, she makes about 300,000 pula, or $278 a month. Using this income, she has sent her two older children to school, as well as sending her three brothers to school. And she also uses the income to pay rent, to pay for household needs, as well as providing some monetary support to some maternal uncles and cousins. She says that the community respects her livelihood and they see her as a successful and professional entrepreneur. She says she plans on being an informal cross-border trade forever. However, she also flagged some very key constraints that she encounters on a daily basis. When asked about constraints, she talked about high taxes and duties, fluctuating value of the commodities she trades for, not knowing how much they cost or how much she should be selling them for, bartering for. She complained about long lines at the border, lack of working capital, and she also said that during the summer months, she, long waits at the border in the hot sun means that sometimes her vegetables from Zambia will get spoiled. And while Ms. A feels empowered by her work and says she can provide for her family with this work, she is also concerned about how much time she spends away from her family and said that she finds it very difficult to be a single working mother.